journey overseas to the hometown of the Dragon. This was our bedroom. This was my bed. I was on top. My brother Zoki was, was down. He still says Dragic. <laughs> this was my radio. Catch a glimpse of his basketball inception. Even now, when I was shooting, my coach Brane, um, he was coaching me. This was not here before, me and my brother. Hey, hey! Explore his true character at his sleepaway camp. I feel like I'm their father for those six, six days. As a player, he's great. As a human being, he's really, really special. And discover his national pride. We were able to travel over there and see him with his national team. It was one of the special moments in, in my coaching career. My country and my city, my parents, my neighborhood, they make me what, what I am now. Inside the Heat, Goran Dragic. Welcome to Inside the Heat. Hello again, everyone. I'm Eric Reed. Goran Dragic is in his third season with the Miami Heat and has grown into a more integral role with the organization. As the starting point guard, Goran has found his own way to be a leader on and off the court. His basket attacking game is a real tone setter for a team following his example. And his work ethic and resolve, well, that's always present. But to fully comprehend the roots of his determination, you must first understand where he comes from. Goran took some time recently, sat down and told us about life in his hometown, and gives us an all-access look on his recent trip back to Ljubljana, Slovenia. All right, let's start from the beginning. Okay, I, will, I grew up in Ljubljana, which is the capital city of Slovenia. It has 250,000 people. So we're here, this is the center of Ljubljana. This is a square, famous square. Like you see, it's really a peaceful, peaceful town. A few years ago, they closed this road. Here was cars before now, it's only for walkers, for bicycles, and it, it's really awesome because you can walk around, the drinks, some great wines, it's great food. Growing up in Slovenia was, was awesome. It's a small country, peaceful country. I'm really grateful that um, I had this opportunity that I could, you know, develop myself as a person. On the top of the mountain is a castle. That's kind of a logo of the city of Ljubljana. The castle and the Dragon Bridge, they kind of are connected. You have four dragons on the each side of the bridge. Uh, when I came to the United States, Steve Nash gave me um, the nickname the dragon because nobody could say my last name um, Dragic. The dragon is the part of my city, it's a logo of the city, so that's why I think it's a perfect nickname for me. Um, here I am, the dragon. <laughs> this is my neighborhood that I grow up. It's called Ulica Franca Mlakara 24. I lived here until I was 15. Then I left my mom and my dad, I went to Spain, but they, they still live here for many, many years. See, he still says Dragic. <laughs> I had an awesome childhood. It was a small apartment, me and my brother, and of course my mom and dad. This is the apartment that I, that I grew up in. Um, this is my mom, Moica. You can see it's really small apartment. Um, this, was, this was our bedroom. Um, this was my bed, I was on top. My brother Zoki was, was down. My relationship with Zoran is unique. Uh, we are brothers, but most of the time we were fighting as a young kids. All the teasing, a spider is gonna get you. It was always something, you know, with the younger brother. But um, in the end, we are best friends. It's brother how I want to have what he was doing, I was doing. So uh, he led me to the basically what I am today. I really love my brother, and um, I miss those old days when we were young kids and we were playing around. Here we would hang out all the time with my neighbors. After a long day on a basketball court or playing different sports, we would just sit down and uh, talk till 1 a.m., 2 a.m. Beside my brother, I have a lot of friends in my neighborhood. One of 
those friends. He's my best man, Greg Terzic. We're still good friends. He's my best man, and I really um, cherish those those um, good old memories. We grew up together. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time together at the Lyria, um, playing basketball, hanging out. You know, we were we were at, at basketball court all the time. When we were in training, we went outside, we played three on three. And when, when we stopped playing basketball, we went to the city, went outside. And then in the morning again, gym, playing outside and so on. It's not spinning. No, it is. <laughs> This was my radio. I, I was listening to the music. This is Serbian music of my father's, but um, um, even now I listen to this kind of music, so it's pretty, pretty fun. Last time that I was here was was probably eight, nine years. So um, I'm really uh, emotional right now um, because it's it's bringing my old memories back. Growing up in that apartment with my family was um, um, great. At that time, we, we didn't have a lot of money, but um, I, like I said, I had an awesome childhood. Um, um, you know, everything's thanks to my, my mom and dad. We were never hungry. My mom, she's a great cook. <laughs> so uh, so was, uh, we had a lot of food on, on our table, and I'm grateful for that. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. As Goran Dragic takes us on a trip to his hometown in Slovenia, he paints a picture for us of what his life was like as a young boy. For him growing up alongside his brother Zoran and his close friends in his neighborhood, and that's where basketball first came into the picture, but only after a soccer injury. And it was in the sixth grade where he met his PE teacher and basketball coach, and that really changed his life. And so his story continues as Goran takes us back to his middle school and tells us how basketball came into the forefront. My father was a amateur soccer player and that's why, you know, um, like all dads, he wanted me to play soccer. But in the end, I had a leg, leg injury and, um, you know, then I had to choose a different sport. The name of my middle school is Osnona Shola Kuseze, and in that school um, I, w in I was introduced first time with, with basketball. Walking around my old school, I just remember that at this spot we play um, one game that we call uh, men versus boys. And um, the game was if you touch this clock, you are a man. If you don't touch that clock, you're a boy. So that was our, our game that uh, we play every, every day. So, you know, that's why I jumped so high. You, you saw how, how I jumped last year, so. <laughs> that steal. Oh. And score by Dragic. He was trying to dunk that. His teammates are over there. <laughs> it's a good thing he made the layup. He would have never heard the end of that one. We are here in, in a basketball gym in my, uh, my middle school. Here it was the first time that I learned how to dribble the ball, how to shoot the ball how to make a layup, basic b basketball, but um, you know, it was huge for me. My first basketball coach was PE teacher, Branko Baudas. He introduced me to basketball. Even until this day, I have awesome relationship with him. No, 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 Gogi, no. <laughs> so even now, when I was shooting, my coach, Brane, um, he was coaching me. And, that's his job. Every time when he sees me on the basketball court, he, he, he's trying to make me better, and I appreciate that. Can we start with Nike? Awesome. Awesome. I started coaching him when he was around eight years old. He came to my basketball practice, and the first time I saw him, I had a smile on my face because I saw potential in him. He was a good student. Whatever you said to him, he did it without any problem. He helped me to develop my personality, how to express myself on the basketball court, and I'm, I'm always going to be grateful. My first basketball club was um, Illyria. 
in that stage of my life, I start playing professionally. I have organized organized practices twice a day, and it was it was something new for me. This is the gym that I start my basketball. I was. 11 years old to 14 years old. So this is way different than before. It's all new. This was not here before. Me and my brother, they make this big poster of us, so they know that we start basketball here. So it's kind of a kind of a cool thing. I met Goran when he was still, uh, I would say, youngster. He was really light and fast, you know. After, after rebound, when you didn't, you know, get him the first small foul, you know, he went like a, you know, like a lightning. Probably because of that, that club, I, I, would start, I start thinking, okay, I want to be a professional basketball player. My biggest challenge was um, probably I was really short and skinny and everybody else was more stronger, faster. I had to find another ways to get better. The work ethic of a guy like him was unbelievable. After my training, he went to another training in Club Illyria and after that went to play street basketball. He always went the extra mile. I tried to um, you know, get better every practice, every game, and that's why it was really important to me to practice more than other players so I can compete with those guys. And I think so that, that's why I developed uh, my work ethics. He mastered the right and left attack. Dribbling, outstanding player, especially because he's a left best player in my coaching career and on top of that he was very fast, lefty and fast. We knew that he's going to be a good player, you know, and, and he developed some of the skills and became really our national number one player in Slovenia. To see that we are playing for Slovenia and it, 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 it's an awesome feeling. And even until this day, this is something that is really important in my life. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. Goran Dragic spends most of his offseason back home in Slovenia, spending time with his family, playing with the national team, and holding his annual basketball camp. His week-long sleepaway camp is in a mountainous region in the town of Rogla and allows children of all ages to spend time with their mentor and hero on the basketball court and in other fun activities as well. For Goran, he just wants to make sure that he's influencing these kids as more than just a basketball coach. In his third year of running the camp, Goran takes us inside for an exclusive look and tells us all about it. We're in uh, Slovenia and we are having Gogi Dragic basketball camp. I'm so excited to be here. This is my first time coming and my favorite uh, thing about camp is hanging with Goran. Hey, hey, hi Dragic. Goran Dragic basketball camp is, um, you know, camp that you can learn basketball. You're away from home without your parents for six days and we learn different sports, they learn English. So it's, it's not only a basketball camp, but it's more of a camp to enjoy and of course to work hard. I'm always for that, for that kids go and get her together and stay together for some time so they see how it is to work in a group and to be the part of the team. Every year we try to be better. Well, our goal is to, to have fun and the, ki the kids they can learn something new. I learned how to pass on top of my head and I throw with one hand. My job is um, when they have practice that I'm, I'm there with them and I give them some advice how to shoot, how to dribble the ball. He is 100% involved. He's always here playing with the kids. He was refing the games today. They're like my kids. I mean, uh, you know, I feel like on the camps I have 100 kids and every kid is unique and I feel like I'm their father for those six days. He, she makes sure that they, um, their beds are made, the rooms are tight and neat. He's just an all-around great person. He's only two months here, so uh, uh, I'm very happy that he, he find one week and that he basically sleep in the hotel with them and they can see him 24-7 a day. She was able to be whole week with him here and spend quality time with him. My favorite experience is disco. It was the midnight. We didn't need to go to sleep at 10. We were uh, dancing, singing and drinking some soda. <laughs> 
my family, we never can afford it to go on, on basketball camps. And then when I succeed in basketball, I said, I don't have camps for kids who they don't have enough money. That's how I came with that idea to have a camp and to, you know, to open the doors to some kids that, that um, they don't have um, a lot of money. This is proof of how big his heart is. He knows what it means to live in poverty and how it feels for someone to give you an opportunity to make something out of yourself. It's all about the kids. You know, you have to look at the kids, you have to see the kids and understand, and you have to realize that you are here because of them. What parents say when the kids leave the camp, I don't know what you do with the kids, but I haven't seen my kid smiling ever this way. I see um, in her eyes because she cried, and then I know that um, it was a great experience for her. I will thank Goran Dragic for his time. Thank you, Goran Dragic! Let's go, Beach! As a player, he's great. As a human being, he's really, really special. I haven't met anyone that would play with the kids for a week and would be just a great mentor. Today we had games and we lost, and the kids were crying. So what he did was, being a great man that he is, he came to the kids and consoled them, and they started laughing. You know, to give something back to community, especially to kids, um, you know, to spend all days here with them, and you know, to practice, to, to hang out, um, to talk, to have fun, it's really something that I enjoy, and I'm looking forward to do it every year. Welcome back to Inside the Heat. Besides heading home to Slovenia every offseason for his basketball camp, Goran Dragic also dedicates his time to play with the Slovenian national team. There he joins up with his brother Zoran and uses that time to sharpen his skills, stay in shape, and help his team get better every single day. Goran even had a special guest visit him in the summer of 2016 to see firsthand the work he puts in. He takes great pride in his nationality and loves representing his country on the national team. And he tells us why it means so much to him. For the past 11 years, I played for my um, Slovenian national team. It's almost mandatory that he plays because without him and his energy, his knowledge, our national team is not a team. We want to play together in national team and that happened, uh, I think, four years ago and it was an unbelievable experience for me. It's really special, you know, playing with my brother on the same team. We don't see each other so often, so every time when we get back home and we are playing for our national team, we can spend some time together, let's say two or three months, and it's always fun. I feel like I didn't even know Goran until this summer. We were able to travel over there and see him in his ultimate comfort zone uh, with his national team. When Spo came to visit me, I was really happy because you know nobody else um, did that for me in, in my NBA career. And I was really grateful and I was really excited because I can show him my country. Seeing some of the things that contributed to building the player that, that we love and seeing him in and his environment it was one of the special moments in, in my coaching career. I'm only the regular guy, I play basketball, but it's awesome to represent my country, to be one of the Slovenian guys in NBA. It's really important to show where you come from. This is the important thing that happened in Slovenia in our history. They put me in this picture, 2008, it was my first time that I that, that I came to the NBA, so it's it's kind of a funny, but um, you know, for these these kids of this school here, it's really important. So I'm really glad that I'm a part of this this wall. For Ljubljana, he means a lot. When he started to become famous, a lot of children took him as a role model. Last year, our basketball courts were flooded with people. My country and my city, and my my parents, my neighborhood, they give me everything and they make me what, what I am now. Now I have this opportunity to give back and um, I'm honored to that I can do that.
squares for three. Got it and fouled! Dragon breathing some fire in Miami. Miami is one of the biggest teams in the NBA. The games here in Slovenia are on television all the time, so the fans now have a chance really to watch. And every time when I talk with my mom and my dad, they walk up at 3 a.m. just to watch my games, and then the next day they need to go to work. <laughs> and, um, but it's always nice to have this kind of support I'm from day one when I was a kid and now when I'm playing in NBA. To make it in the NBA, coming from a small country like Slovenia, it's one in a million probably uh, chance or something. But, you know, nobody realizes how much hard work he puts in. Dragic spinning out of trouble. Look at that. Oh, he faked the crossover, Eric. What he brings to the team is leadership. He's definitely a leader of the team. He's always doing the right thing. If you're in practice and you want to look over and see somebody who's doing the drill right or doing what they're supposed to do, just look at Gordon. He's going to have a, a tremendous role now. We want to play fast and he's going to push the break. He's going to find the open guy, but he's going to get to the rim. He's going to attack. And so he's kind of the perfect point guard for us. It means a lot. It means a lot to be part of this organization, to play for Miami Heat. My personal expectations for this season is to be better than last season. We have a lot of new faces, but I think so. It's a really young team and we're going to be okay because um, we can we can run all day. Here's Dragic for Hassan! <laughs> Dragic all the way through off the glass, got it and fouled! And our goal is to make a playoffs and grow as a team each game. He needs to bring a ring back to Slovenia. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> the no trophy. Pressure, right? <laughs> I'm lucky guy because um, my dreams were someday to play in the NBA, and right now I'm here. And um, my job is to play basketball, and um, hopefully I can do that for ma for many many years. Perfect. That's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Spending some time with Goran in Slovenia was really a unique way for Heat Nation to get to know and understand how he became the man and player he is today. A true family man whose national pride is apparent. It's easy to see his happiness shine through, whether he's on the court, walking through his old neighborhood, or at a dance party with his campers. The Miami Heat organization takes pride in having Goran Dragic as a leader on the floor and a first-class person off the court as well. We hope you enjoyed this exclusive trip back home with Goran Dragic, and thank you very much for watching this special edition of Inside the Heat. I'm Eric Reed.